How's it going everyone? So I'm Eddie Barrett. Welcome to Atomic Auto Works. We're doing another video of making a custom motorcycle seat. So this one here is a 2000 Harley Davidson Fat Boy. So when I got started in this business, these were like super popular seats for us back in the days. This kind of brings back some memories. I love doing it. It's a great bike. It was a fun bike to customize. Everybody was doing it. These here are kind of notorious for having kind of a weird shape. So you don't have any back support. Cause you actually, you'll sit here. So your butt cheeks are here and nothing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this two piece seat into a one piece two up seat. And we're gonna actually make the foam come up a little bit here, kind of like a drag seat. You hear me say that a lot, where it's just gonna give you a little bit of support, not truly like a drag seat, because a drag seat kicks back and really gives you too much support. We're gonna end up giving him a lot of back support here, so there's less pressure on his cheeks and he can relax a little bit. And then we're also gonna take and make this really cool. We're gonna do this in a black imitation leather with a custom flame pattern. I think we're doing, yeah, we're doing blue and silver overlapping flames, so it's gonna be really cool. Can't wait to do it. I know a lot of people actually keep asking, you know, why don't we put pictures of the motorcycle with the seat on it? And we would love to. We hope that maybe people could send us in pictures when they get their seats. A lot of the seats that we do are shipped to us from all over the world, so we don't always necessarily have the motorcycle in our shop. If you are seeing this and you are one of our customers, please feel free to send us in some photos of your bike with our seats on it. It'd be really cool, or any of our products, whether it's our fenders we make or side covers or whatever it is, stretch tanks, anything that we make, please feel free to send us some pictures. We'd love to showcase your bikes and our work. Okay, so I'm about to remove the staples and take the seat apart. Just wanted to show you the bottom of it. So you can see the rear seat is actually held on by two bolts and it is detachable. So we're gonna actually leave it bolted on permanently. For the seat, we're gonna remove the back tab so we could access the staples underneath it. And I'm gonna pull all the staples out and pull the foam off, fix the pan, because obviously the pan must be broken underneath it. We'll repair the pan and then rivet it on like it's supposed to be. looks pretty cool, isn't it? I feel like I'm like at a concert, like, ah, heavy metal, woo! Okay, so I'm steaming the um, plastic off. Okay, all the plastic's off, so let's bring this over to the foam table. Okay, let me just swap seats out here. Okay, this mask is to keep the dust out, not for the coronavirus. Just to be clear, we're actually using it for its right purpose. So one of the things I like to do on touring bike seats, which we can't really do on this, on the Fat Boy, because if you look at the bottom of it, you see how the seat pan actually goes all the way up in there. Hopefully you can see that, see how deep that goes. So really where you think it's a really wide seat, it's actually, there's only a quarter inch of foam there at, at, at the most. Normally what we like to do is we'll bring these seats up and we scoop them and give you a little bit of a kick, but we really can't go down on this one and I don't want it to go up any higher in the back. So what I ended up doing is I started to index it because sometimes on a, when you're taking a two piece seat and making it into a one piece seat, you get everything lined up and you get the foam glued back on it. As you're sculpting it, you'll see like 
by adding the foam, it's like an optical illusion. It looks wider than here. Sometimes it'll play tricks on your eyes. If you index it, you can get your measuring points. I'll put a point up here and you mark one inch out on each side and you can measure from the tip to those points and that tells you that you're straight. Also the same thing with the sides here. So I put a rough line on the side. So I'm gonna carve it flat and then I'm gonna do the sides, kind of sculpt them up to that body line. So you're almost making like a body line when you're doing body work on a car. So we'll get that there so that we know it's straight. You know, when you're doing body work on a car, like on a higher end car, you'll actually body work everything to a crisp edge. So that it gives you a straight edge. So it's easier to see and feel and, you know, shadow and everything. So when, when you're looking at it, you know that it's actually crisp and straight. Similar on a, on a upholstery job where you could mark your lines and you could sculpt up to this point, sculpt up to it on this side, and then it'll give you a nice crisp edge. And then that crisp edge actually helps you to make sure the seat is symmetrical and looks right. I'm gonna finish grinding this up and then we're gonna put a couple layers of comfort foam on here. I think as I said before, this customer did not want to move forward at all, but he did want back support. So we added the back support. We actually carved it in so we could sit back a little bit. Now you're sitting back and in the saddle, which gives you tremendous back support. Because it is a comfortable seat and he didn't want to modify it too much, it is gonna be a little bit thicker. As we do the custom cover, one of the things that we'll do is we actually change where our our stitching is to give it the illusion that it's actually a thinner seat and that'll help it to kind of look a little bit cooler. So we have the two piece seat actually turned into a one piece. You can kind of get the gist of it. I got a little bit more shaping to go on it and then we are going to foam it. I'm going to do it a little differently. Normally like depending on how you do the seat, you do wrap the whole thing in like a quarter inch or eighth inch sew foam, but because we are doing flames across the whole thing and I'm gonna be using a half inch sew foam because I really want a lot of depth in our stitching. I'm only gonna put the sew foam around the sides because the top's gonna to be all half inch sew foam. Okay, I wanna talk about patterning. Where's the seat? Oh, here it is. Okay, so some people will look at the seat and wonder why you make stitching in certain places or you make the, the seams in certain places. On this one here, you see, Sometimes we'll have a stitch come down and go across here. Sometimes we'll have the seam go down here. Sometimes people will turn it here. So some of the different reasoning is if you have a seam that comes down and curves and then goes straight down, when you put the seat cover on, it's easier to line up both sides because you have a straight seam that you're pulling down on. Whereas when they come across here, sometimes if you pull this cover off or that cover off, where that seam meets the edge of the seat pan will actually be off and it kind of like looks worse than it is sometimes because you could have that seam off just a little bit and when you hold that seat up and look symmetrically it's going to be way down so a lot of people avoid that straight stitch they're that style stitch i actually sometimes i like it because it looks better on certain bikes with this bike here i'm going to have this one rounded just because it is a fat boy and everything on this bike is round so i kind of want everything to flow together also on some motorcycle seats the seat might curve up really radical in the front a lot of the newer street glides and road glides have that really sharp arch so when you're actually rolling material around it makes it difficult to do so you'll see a lot of people put a stitch that runs up the side here um, this allows you to get a nice flat panel on side on, on the top and then a fat, flat panel on the sides one thing, one reason that we a lot of times don't like that stitch right there is it will rub on the inside of your leg and have a tendency to wear prematurely. So you could get a stitch or a thread that pops or you could just get the edge of the material wearing more so on leather than vinyl. Vinyl lasts a little bit longer. So a lot of times we'll actually try to keep that seam down a little lower so it doesn't rub on your leg. So earlier I had said that we're putting the quarter inch soap foam on the sides because we're doing half inch on the top. Whenever I do flame work on the tops of seats, I kind of like it to be a little puffy so it has some dimension. A lot of times you don't really want to use a half inch soap foam on a motorcycle seat because it is pretty thick and you really never want to use half inch soap foam on the sides. So quarter and eighth are good. Eighth is sometimes a little too thin. The, the quarter works really well. You'll see here, I lost my marker. See here, the top surface here is gonna, has no quarter inch foam. I'm gonna put my half inch foam, so foam right on here because I want it to have a little bit better of a profile. If you wrap the whole seat in quarter inch and then use a cover that also has so foam on it, it'll sometimes have like a puffiness, which I just don't like. I'm also gonna take and break this up here and have a seam that comes down here. We'll have our flames here. We're gonna have flames in the back and then I'm gonna have 
This is gonna be a smooth vinyl going across here and this will be a smooth vinyl. And then we're also gonna do a stitch right along here roughly to kind of break it up. And I like to do this literally just to break up the thickness of the size of the seat. So I'm about to sketch out the flame pattern and here's a picture of the bike. You can see it has two different color ghost flames on it. There's a silver and a bluish. It almost looks like an aqua -y, so I'm gonna have to try to match up that thread color. We're gonna do a overlapping double flame stitch with that. So This can actually are like a spaghetti flame. Which are longer and they're flow. Now I'm hoping this will fill in the seat enough so it looks good. I ended up running this over here because they're kind of their, their ghost flames are all over the place. They have a spaghetti tip on them. Now I have to do the second layer. Sometimes the first layer I leave a little bit bland looking, knowing that the second layer is gonna fill it in and I don't want it to overpower and have too much going on. Um, as you can see by the amount of erasing I've done on this, I'm actually not in or wasn't in the zone. Sometimes you gotta just keep working it until you start feeling the flow of what you're doing. What I'm using here is actually a really cheap masking paper for masking off cars. I don't, I, we bought it a long time ago and I just, I won't use it for masking off cars when you're painting them. Started using it here and it actually works pretty good. So I just traced the flames that I did already. Now I'm gonna take the top piece, put it under on top of the bottom piece. So now I can move this around until I feel like I got the right pattern that I want to do or how I want to do it. So I want to make sure that I have enough. And I am going to have to tweak it because it's not going to work the way I want it to work. But we could actually kind of get a flow of it. I think this is what I'm going to go with. One of the flames is going to end up being silver and the other one will be the blue. I just got to transfer it to the other side. And then um, hopefully it looks good on the bike because what I was thinking is with the seat curved up like this and it's going to be curved down like that, it's going to have a little bit of a weirdness to it. So I want to make sure everything flows together. So, uh, flames are transferred to the material now and I'm going to start stitching them up. Okay, we are getting close. I'm going to go through and make sure that all of our lines are completed and finished. You hate to put a seat together and then find out that you missed one. I'm going to start this blue one up here. This last tip. Okay, so right now I'm actually sewing the side panels, the rear side panels for the back part of the seat. I like to try to get a bunch of my panels sewn together with the black on black thread. Then I could switch it and go to the blue thread because I'm going to do silver stitch on the top of the seat and all the edging on it. Sometimes if you do a colored stitch when you're doing your actual butt seam, you could see that through it when you pull the seat and it looks horrible. So we switch back to black. Sometimes I'll use one of my other machines and put different colors in there and bounce back and forth. It's kind of a pain moving around for the videos. I'll just change the color on these things that we're doing them. Okay, so this one's ready. In silver on all these guys. Start here, just because I feel like it. You know, if there's any upholstery guys out there who have any tips or tricks and see me doing something and they have some good ideas, let me know. I'm always up to learning new things. Okay, I'm gonna clean her off. 
Here it is. We just turned a two-piece seat for the soft tail into a one-piece solo seat and did some flames on it.